Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Progress Over Perfection. And for today, we have a very special guest. And in fact, it's our first guest on the podcast. Uh, it's one of my very good friends, Atika. And today, she's going to be sharing with us how she traveled to more than 10 countries at the age of 21 years old. Am I right, Atika? Hi, everyone. Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay, nice. So, Atika, you know... Uh, <laughs> Okay, okay. We we were just talking about it off camera. Like we want to see how we we want to record this yeah. podcast because it's my first time having on as a guest, and Atika is also first time sharing on a podcast platform as well. So it's exciting, you know. We're learning as we're going. We're progressing, as I like to say. All right. Uh, but first up, you know, we always have to have that opening question, which is Atika. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how what do you do, you know, and how did you get to where you are here today. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, I'm Atika. So I'm currently um an intern at Club Malaysia. You know, yeah. Do you know Club <laughs> Nick? Club, I definitely know it. I I use Club to actually like book all my hotels and then book my flights. And yes, everything. correct. So it is the, exactly. It is the travel platform. Yeah. Okay, that's right. So actually, Clue is a travel app and I'm currently uh, doing an internship there. And I also just graduated um, and going for my convocation soon in December. Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. Okay, very nice also. Yeah, so currently you're at Clue, right? What, what do you do at Clue? Yeah, maybe you can give more context to them Yeah, for those who don't know. Uh, all right, so what I do in Clue is I'm helping more on marketing side. So I'm currently doing a, a partnership and affiliates marketing at Club Malaysia. Yeah. Nice. So so for those who don't know, right, um, she says that she does marketing and everything on the side of Club. But more specifically, I would say that she is that she handles influencers. Yeah. So if you guys ever heard of the Club Creator Program, uh, which is like an affiliate program for Club. Uh, where we have creators such as myself, you know, she she got me on board with Clue Creator. Uh, for everything, for every like Clue activity that you share online, and people use your link to apply for apply for going on holidays and everything, you actually get a yes. cut, like a small five percent commission or so. You know, my girlfriend loves it. She's also doing it. You get a small commission from it, and um end of the day you know you'll be able to make some side income yeah so Atika over here has handled with a lot of big names uh she has handled with a few influencers few youtubers we're not going to name drop here you know because uh what uh pr what confidential information but you know it's pretty interesting on what she does as well so if you're interested to know a little bit more about Kluk, uh you can always reach out to her i'll drop out the link later but it's a pretty interesting place to work at right Atika since that you have experience in traveling and um you know working in this sort of environment do you feel like it it um how to say it Mm, helps or you say makes you more inspired to actually go out there and travel yes correct because actually it, it aligns with my interests lah. because currently i'm i'm a person who loves to travel right and i'm also currently handling club creator program so um i get to like meet a lot of like amazing influencers who also love traveling you know, so I get to meet a lot of like like minded people there. So yeah. So we can we can I mean like we can we can share a lot of stories about traveling, our our interests and passions and all. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. All right. So without further ado, let's jump into the topic, you know. Um I, I remember that the first time you actually shared the story of you traveling to ten different countries at twenty one years old was um I think it was about last year or maybe... I think it was last year or two years ago. This was still yeah, when I was working yes. in Yeah, yes. It was last year. It yes, was last it, year, right? Yeah, it was right? last yeah. year actually when I get the opportunity to study uh, abroad for exchange around six months. So that's where I get to like have the time to uh, travel around. Yeah. Nice. What What made you... in? What inspired you to go on this solo traveling journey? Okay, so uh, actually before this, right, I also love to travel. I always like go backpack with my mom, go to Korea, go to Indonesia and all. So, uh, but this time I feel like I want to try out something new, something like more challenging, which is go going for solo traveling. So, yeah, I think I, I should like step, um, like 
go um get out from my comfort zone, I would say, and then like um do something that is more challenging and yeah because because i i never tried out like um i never like do solo traveling before this right so i really want to know how does it feels like how um how can i overcome the problems and all so yeah i love challenging stuff so that's why <laughs> where where was it that you did your six month internship you know six months um what's it called um, oh exchange transfer, right Oh exchange, yeah, correct. Yes, so, oh, man. <laughs> forgot to mention that actually I did exchange in the UK. So if, if you know Wales, it's actually part of the UK. Yeah. So I did a six month exchange program there. So yeah, and I get a chance to travel around there as well. I see. Was it was it something that how to say, um, that you before you even went to UK, you had this intention because I have I have met people that have gone on, uh, exchanges overseas, right? And I think UK is one of those places that people have a love hate relationship. I've I've met Malaysians that tell me that I don't like it because it's cold and I don't like it because the food is bland. Like they have a lot of complaints with it. But then the the nice thing about it is that they are overseas, you know, they're in a new place. And when people think about UK, wow, then they will have this their, this grand picture painted into their heads, you know. But when they go over there, they have this uh, experience and they decided that they didn't want to go out and travel and somewhat they miss a few opportunities here and there, you know. But how was it for you? Did you, did you go, did you know that you were going to go for this student exchange trip and then once you knew that, oh, okay, I want to, I'm going for this trip, then you started to plan all the places that you're going to go. How was it like? Okay, so that's why before you do something, right, you need to have a purpose. So, like, for me, I, I know, like, besides of um, just study, go, going for exchange, I, I want to do, like, something new. Or, like, for example, like, I want to go solo traveling or I want to meet new people or learn new culture there. So, like... Uh, yeah, so for me, I, I want to go, I want to learn more about the culture, the food and all. So I keep myself open-minded. So this is the most important thing, like, I would say that if you want to go somewhere, uh, you need to open your mind because you cannot expect that uh, you will be having the same life, uh, the same life as what you have in your country now, right? Mm -hmm. So you you just need to be open, um, learn about new things, challenge yourself and then um, I mean, like, just just accept lah, you know, like feel feel more accept, feel uh, I mean, like more open to new mm. things, yeah. I see. Did you have the same experience mm. as well? Like you went to the UK, then you're away from your nasi lama, you're away from your nan chicken and stuff like that. Then you go over there, you eat bread and potatoes, and then every day it feels like, oh my goodness, did you have this thing? Yes, correct. Because because you know what? When after I come back from UK, right, the first thing that I find is nasi lemak. <laughs> that that's the thing that I the food that I miss the most. But yeah, but I already prepare myself already lah. That I already know that um when I go for exchange, I know that I will not find nasi lemak. I mean, I I can find it, but it's far away from my place. So I just yeah. So what what you can do is like. Maybe you can find local friends there and then ask them like um uh, what are the uh, what is their uh, traditional food and then some um good recommendation restaurants there so that you can try out. Yeah, I think that's really helpful for me. Oh nice. What 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 is what is one of their traditional foods? I'm 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 not too clear on like, like Okay, like foods like UK for example, right? Okay, it's fish yeah. and chips. <laughs> Um, Everyone okay, knows okay. that, but the thing is, yeah, you can you can ask them like um which restaurant serve the best fish and chips in the town, right? right. So that you can go to that place. Not not um, everywhere is good, you know. <laughs> okay, okay, nice. But isn't it like a mm. standard as well? Like every restaurant you go into UK, like there's fish and chips. Yeah, because this is one of the main foods that I hear. Uh yes, although it's main food, but the taste is not necessarily the same, right? So you can Do ask like your local friends, like maybe like which is the best stall in the town so that you can try it out. So that's what okay. I did. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so which is the best stall? Which is the best stall in Wales? Or where have you been that has the best fish and chips okay. so far? 
so so I mean, all right. So actually, um, uh, I got this um uh, recommendation from my local friends in Wales. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's around my um dorm as well. My accommodation, the place where right. I stay, is called <laughs> Jack Murphy Bar. Jack Murphy. Yeah. Okay. So they serve like uh the best fish and chips there. Ah, okay, okay, nice. Was how 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 do they how do they actually like determine? Fish and chips, so that, that, so that, yeah, you know, what is their criteria? You know, what's a UK person okay. standard? Okay, so if, uh, the difference, right, between fish and chips in Malaysia, the, the portion is very small. Okay. <laughs> the portion is very small for one person. You know, but in UK, right, you can see that the fish and chips size is bigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you can't finish it alone, and then they will put a lot of, like, fries, where you can't finish uh-huh. it. Okay, you is know, it's is there? It's impossible for you to finish it alone. Ah, uh, okay lah. So like maybe American style lah. Like everything is like besar besar, big big and Correct. everything. Correct. Correct. Oh, okay. The portion is bigger than what you okay. see in Malaysia. Yeah, if you, okay. if you see in uh in in Malaysia right, they put salad, uh, and fish and chips mm. right. They they put like uh coleslaw salad and all right. Mm. But but in the UK they don't put it. You know, just like plain, just like fish and chips. Okay. Yeah. Do they is is like tartar sauce, um yeah, tartar yeah, yeah. sauce their thing? So that's an yes. actual thing that comes together with a UK dish. Like. Correct. Then they eat okay. then they eat chips, right? Is it eat with because I know places, right? They eat with ketchup instead of chili. Like Malaysia we eat with chili, but mm. then over there they eat with ketchup. Do they do that then? I don't think they have chili there. They only have ketchup. Um, <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, see, man. Okay, okay, nice. All right. So, jumping back to the topic, you know, you 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 did a six months in Wales, you know, and um, I I I think that's where also majority of the traveling stories that I have heard, um, started from uh started from you, you know. So where did you go, lah? Tell us about your journey. How did you start off in Wales, and then what was the what was the route that you took? Okay, so six months is a very long time, right? So mm-hmm. I don't travel like everywhere uh, everywhere all at once you know i split it so the first the first place i go is where um from wales i took bus to london which is around five hours five to six hours yeah okay. it's a very long journey actually so wales and london is very far journey so the reason why i choose bus um instead of flights okay because um First is is cheaper. The price is cheaper, and then secondly, I I just want to feel like having a long journey in bus. Yeah. You know? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, ah, and... okay, okay. So you okay? Well, all right. Mm-hmm. So after you went to London, where's next? Oh, so so actually, I go around London first, and then I stay there for few uh for few days, and after that, I go to uh, I take bus again to Birmingham. Yeah, okay, that's where okay. I explore places around there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I I don't really have much time after that. Then I I come back to Wales, and the next day I I, I went to Bath. <sighs> there is like one place in the UK is called Bath, <laughs> the Roman Bath. Yeah, so it's really nice place to visit. If so, if you guys visit uh UK, that's the the stop that you guys need to go to. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I see. So majority of the trips that you took, right? Uh, it mm-hmm. was more like weekend trips or anything because UK yes, itself it's is like uh, a weekend. It's like a... Ah, okay, okay. Correct. And like UK, to my understanding, is more like a... I, or at least Europe, is like a cluster of countries um, together. So like traveling from one place to another, it, it doesn't take as long, right? If, I, if, if, if I'm understanding this through the stories. Mm, correct. Because mm, it is still inter okay. interconnected la with public transportation, with trains or bus. Ah? Yeah. Okay, okay. How how did you get around, you know? Um, was it everything through buses or is there like I know some places in like maybe Japan, you know, you have that 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 travel card and then you just buy one travel mm. card that you can travel to most of the places in Japan through that card itself. So does UK adopt a similar system or what was what is the best way to get around in the UK? Okay, so for example, if you are in London, right? So you have, uh, you you can take train, as a main public transport, but um, I would say the price is um more expensive, 
So I would recommend you to take the red bus, the London red bus red. instead. Okay. Yeah, the, the double decker bus, right? You know. Uh, iconic KSS iconic. Yes, the iconic <laughs> London uh, red bus. That one. I think that one is more. Uh, if you take bus, is more fulfilling lah. I would say than train because train is, um, the route is underground, so you can't really see anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. So if you take the red bus and you you can like go around London and see the view. Okay. okay. What's mm. what's the pricing like for like red bus and then like underground tunnel and everything? You know what's what's the what's the pricing like? Uh, the pricing there it it depends on um your the routes like I mean the places that you want to go. Uh, mm. I'm. Actually, I forget already. I need to look back <laughs> because there's an app actually which is very useful. It's called Train Line. Okay. Train yeah. Line. Train Line. Yeah. So whenever you okay, go okay. to travel in Europe, you can use this app to book a bus or a bus or um train. Yes. Mm. Ah. Okay. Okay. So it is like Move It lah in Malaysia, right? I'm not sure you got use Move It, M O O V I T. Ah. Yep. 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 It's Singapore, almost like that. Mm. Ah, okay. But okay, Trina nice. is very, so, very useful because it's not only um around UK. You can also use mm-hmm. it in other European countries as well. Ah, yeah. so it was designed more for like European countries, last specific. Yeah, correct. Ah, okay, okay, nice. Which which has been your favorite place that you have visited um throughout the time that you started, um. From the beginning until now, like where has been your favorite place you visited? Okay, so after that that weekend trip, right? I go for another trip. So this one, um, I went to from Wales. I took train to Liverpool. Mm-hmm. So from Liverpool, I go all the way to Manchester, and from Manchester, mm-hmm. I go all the way to York. So it's a city in York. Uh, it's at the northern part of UK. And then after that, I go straight mm-hmm. to Scotland. Glasgow, Scotland. Yeah. So I, I stayed there for a few days um, in each city. And after that, I um, go to Edinburgh and explore yeah, the cities around there. Yeah. So I think uh, the so best which, which... part... Okay, the best part for me, the best city I would say is Edinburgh. It's such a beautiful and nice city. If let's say you are a huge fan of Harry Potter, it will transport you <laughs> to the same feel as the movie scene, you know? Yeah. And it's ah. always raining there. So in Scotland, right, the okay. uh, one thing, yeah, the yeah. most important thing that you need to prepare is uh, the raincoat or maybe like waterproof jacket. Mm-hmm. It's really important because that time, right? I didn't know, I I didn't know that uh Scotland always rain, so mm. yeah, I I I wet, I was wet, <laughs> so yeah, don't please don't forget to buy raincoat or waterproof jacket. Yeah, it will save your life. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. Was was how say. Um, cause cause it rains pretty frequent in the UK, if I understand. But does it rain Correct. more in Glasgow, or or how is it? How is it like? What's the weather generally like when you travel around? Was okay. it always wet? How is it? It's always raining in the UK, so you can't really expect. And one more thing is, you don't expect the rain will be the same as the one in Malaysia. You know the the rain there. The, you know, like, it, it, it's not only rain, but the wind is so strong. So, you can't even oh. use umbrella. If you use umbrella, it will, like, fly fly away, you know. It happened to me uh-huh. once. <laughs> okay. and, and it was so embarrassing because it happened at the traffic light when I was, uh, when I was crossing the road, you know. And I take the umbrella and then the wind suddenly feels so strong and then it's like fly away. And I need to run and pick it up. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> so yeah, this is another lesson. Uh, please, I, I would say that it's better to buy waterproof jacket rather than using okay. umbrella. 
Mm, okay, okay, nice. Right. So we know where it's like one of your favorite places is because uh Glasgow looks a little bit Glasgow, right? Edinburgh. <laughs> Edinburgh, oh man, oh cool. yeah, okay, Edinburgh is the best. Edinburgh, okay. So <laughs> Your favorite okay. one, of your, your favorite place that you travel so far is Edinburgh because it's like Harry Potter. You know, you get the vibe. It's always raining, so you feel like you're in the K drama. You know, very sad maybe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what about so that's your favorite place? What has been the worst experience that you that you had? Okay, the the worst experience. I I said that there, there are few actually. So <laughs> okay, I would say I uh, yeah I give like three three experience lah. so the first one is um okay so i had a i joined a tour so there was only me in the group and two tour guides so we went uh, around um highlands the highlands in scotland you know where the road is like what? Pusing, pusing, yeah, left, right, left, right. Yes, pusing, pusing lah, like, you know. Camera, la, camera yeah, la, correct. Like, so cool. i was in the van in the van that time in the tour van and then I didn't realize that I have motion sickness. Mm. Motion sickness, you know, right, right. like mm -hmm. like yeah, nausea lah. Mm. Uh, so so that time right when I was in the van, I uh, I suddenly feel like very pening, you know, like headache, and then I feel like want to vomit. <laughs> and then I ended up through throughout twice inside the oh, van. Man. Okay. So, I, I, yeah, I look very weak and I can't really, like, 100% enjoy the moment. So, what I learned from here is that uh, even if you don't feel like you have motion sickness or what, it's just, um, you need to be cautious lah. Just prepare, like, uh, medicine, you know, like, um, motion sickness pill, just buy, mm -hmm. buy it. Yeah, just in case if you feel, suddenly feel headache or what, just prepare all Panadols, um, yeah, the first aid kit or whatever. Yeah, it's really important. And then the second thing is life insurance. Life insurance is also very, very important when you're traveling. Just in case if anything happened to you, uh, yeah, if you are solo traveling or if you're traveling in a group also, anything can happen, right? So, hmm. so it's really important to get life insurance as well. And yeah, and the 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 second thing that happened to me is that power bank. Okay. So it happened to me. So I I forgot to charge my power bank fully. So when I go solo travel and I don't have enough battery on my phone. Okay, and this was like, um, and my phone was like less than 10%. And all my tickets, the hotel that I booked, the, all the proof is inside the phone. So, <laughs> please be make sure to, uh, I mean like, make sure that your phone is fully charged. So, how, how, how I solve that problem? So, I, since I know that my phone is, Lesser, lesser than 10%, right? The battery. So I quickly go and run to nearby shops, the, the phone shops and all. Just ask them like if you, if I can uh, charge my phone here for a while. You know, it, it's quite hard actually uh, because some shops, they will reject, you know. They say, oh, no, 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 you can't charge your phone here. So not, okay. not everyone is welcoming. Especially when they see you are a foreigner or what. Yeah, I don't know what they think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so this is uh, another important thing. But luckily, there's one shop, uh, the owner is really kind. So they allow me to like charge my phone there and sit there for a while. <laughs> so I'm very, very grateful for that. Okay, and then uh, what else? Um, Yeah, I, I would say that one. And then another thing is, yeah, the payment card. Yeah, so you so when you travel, right, you use uh debit card, credit card or whatever, right? So like me, uh, when I travel around, I use wise card, the green mm. wise card. Okay, so <laughs> something happened to my card where I can't uh, tap, you know, I can't pay. I can't do payment there. There's something wrong with my card that I need to change with, where I need to wait around two weeks to get a new one. Mm -hmm. So from here, right, you... Uh, it's really important for you to keep some cash in your hand. Yeah. 
although although uh like most of the European country doesn't accept cash, but it's really important to spare some uh, some cash also. Yeah. So like for example, if you uh travel around by bus, some of them only accept cash instead of um card. So mm. it, it's really important for you to save also lah. Yeah, to put that in your pocket just in case if anything happen. And then. Okay, I think I add another one, which is really, really uh, bad experience. <laughs> I lost my bag. Okay, I mean like, um, it could curi lah, I would say. So, uh, there was a moment when I traveled to Spain. So, I only bring one bag. I don't, I, I usually when I travel around, I don't bring luggage one. So, I usually bring a backpack and um yeah and my whole backpack lost in spain got taken by someone because why how how did that happen because actually um i was trying to take picture like the nice mm. photo spot there you know the it, it's like a tu- tourist spot so i was trying to take picture and i just put my bag beside <laughs> and someone just snatched mm. it away and i can i don't see anything after that yeah, but okay. luckily, I brought a tote bag where I put all my passport, my important stuff in my tote bag. So it's really important for you to like, uh, keep those important stuff like your phones, your passport, especially in a separate place. Mm. You know, just in case if someone snatch your bag, oh, it's still there with you. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. So oh, man, that, that are some it? of the tips. Lah. Yeah. Okay, nice. What what was inside the bag? Yeah, you know he snapped, but ah, yeah, what he snapped. Okay. Luckily there's nothing important inside the bag. Okay, there's nothing valuable. Lah. I I need yeah. Just my clothes. My old clothes. Yeah, the busuk busuk clothes. And also okay. some souvenirs that I bought in Italy mm. and Switzerland. Which I can't say okay. actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So please make sure that uh pickpocket is very very uh I mean like the issue is very huge in Europe. So mm. it's really important for you to take care of your own stuff. So when you eat um eat in a restaurant, right, in Europe countries, so in Malaysia you can put your phone on the table. Like you just put your mm. phone and then you eat, right? So you can do that. Okay, please don't yeah. do that in Europe. Pickpocket is really a huge issue there. So yeah, just just put it, hide it somewhere. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Okay. Uh, definitely mm. worse than the ones we have in Malaysia, lah. I've been I've been like, scrolling TikTok, and then after that, I'm not sure whether you have seen these videos, but I've been like scrolling TikTok. You will get those type of people who are just like walking on the street, then they have their phone like that. It's just very casually they're looking. Then there's mm. people like coming on the back on their motorbike, like it it. It is, they look better than normal kapcha in Malaysia, but they're just like really fast. They like just drive next to you. It's more like an e-scooter. They drive next to you. Then they just snatch your phone really, really quick. And after that, they just drive off over there. Something similar to what we have in Malaysia, but it seems to have more in the UK and like all these pickpocket things as well. I I think also, from what I understand, because my sister is an ass to this, right? So what from what I've heard, it is like generally done by the kids as well. Yeah. Is that true? Is that a thing like you can go from? Uh, I'm not sure because you know the, the person who snatched my bag, I don't see that person anymore. It just disappear after that. When I turn, everything is like nothing happened, you know? So I I, can't, I don't really know whether it's a kid or not. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Okay, now my hopefully, you know, I say hopefully these type of cases like there's less of it but for those who are listening at least you guys know there are some things that you should watch out for you know bring your bring your nausea pills make sure that you have another separate uh, pouch for all the important stuff like your passport you know get life insurance you know yeah so if if anyone is selling life insurance you know who to drop the <laughs> you know who to go to and everything but yeah you know okay so jokes aside you know you you mentioned about like going to all these places, you know, and um partly of 
of traveling is that you want to get the best experience out of it. And uh, one of the ways that you mentioned is actually meeting people uh, while you are traveling, you know. So tell us a little bit about how do you actually connect with other people? Uh, what are your ways to connect with other people when you're traveling overseas? Uh, okay, so it happened to me. Um, I mean like, yeah, so it happened when I um, study exchange in in UK, right? So I made a lot of like local friends there. So because because I I try to like maybe maybe you can uh, if you have the opportunity to study abroad, don't just mix around with your group of friends. That that's my advice. Try to like uh find a new tribe, a new community, maybe like local of uh, uh people there and make some new friends there. You will learn a lot actually. Yeah. So like for me maybe you 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 can just like um uh text your classmate for example like you you have like local friends your your local classmates there right you can just like hey can we grab a coffee together sometime yeah yeah I would like to know more about uh, your country blah blah like that for example so that's that's what I uh, I do and yeah so I learned a lot of stuff lah like uh what are some uh uh recommendation recommended places to visit there and i i just know there is one place in wales which has the longest name in the world you know the the place has the longest oh okay 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 name. i i i have heard about it yeah you know i've seen it online lah i've seen it online yeah it's in wales <laughs> Yeah, if you search it, you will find it. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, nice. So it's some, it is like hanging. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's some oh, of sorry, the interesting thing that you can you can learn lah from from your local friends actually. Yeah. Ah, okay, I see. Mm. Yeah, so so for your case, you were quite fortunate because you were studying like six months over there lah. But I think this one over here could apply for. Uh, it depends on uh, some people not so extroverted, right? But for me, I'm quite extroverted. Right. So I'll give everybody here a tip as well, right? So usually what I will do is that I'm very active on like Instagram and I will connect with people like here and there. I just find them very interesting. So I have done it at times. I will just drop people like DMs or messages, you know, and just like say, hey, I am traveling to this where, this where, this where. Like let's just say I'm traveling to Thailand over here, Bangkok. Um, you know, and uh, I'm actually looking for someone to show me around. Um, and um, if and learn a little bit more about your culture, you know, what can you, what are some of the places that you can share with me that maybe I should visit, you know. And at the times, like, you will find that a lot of people online, you know, are actually, actually quite nice. You don't have to meet them face to face, but you can just ask them questions and then they'll be able to tell you because I've done that a few times as well. Yeah, and, and you will see that a lot of people are just like more than willing to help no matter like where you are in the world. Generally, people are like quite friendly, like, I would say. Yes, correct. And another thing is, if you are going for solo traveling, especially, right, you can make a lot of friends and at hostels, you know, the hostels, mm. right? You can meet like the uh, your fellow travelers there. But for me, I'm not that extroverted, and I know that I need to keep um, I need to make sure my safety as well. <laughs> mm. So I don't really like mingle around whatever because yeah first i think uh it's also important to uh make sure that you uh, make sure your safety so <laughs> yeah you just need to know like what what kind of person that you are going to mingle around lah. like for me i'm not too that brave enough to do that yeah mm. but but i mean if you you guys brave enough and extrovert enough go go ahead you know <laughs> like it's really fun to connect with other travelers around the world where you share uh, same passion and interest. Mm. Mm, true that, true that. You know, you mentioned about safety and then it, it, it reminded me of the one question I wanted to ask. Um, because you're, you're quite a small person, right? You are, like standing next to me, I'm very short. I'm like 165. And after that, you are mm. smaller than me. You're around like 150, like considered. Correct. Uh, 150, right? You are considered as a smaller person. And, and I feel like um, through a lot of conversation, like including the one with I have with my girlfriend, because my girlfriend is pretty small as well. She's around your height, right? And I think one of the fears that um, they have is that I'm a small person, you know, I'm a girl, I'm afraid of solo traveling in case, because the risks are higher for me, you know? What if I get kidnapped to Cambodia or something like, you know? They, they have this fear, you know? Yeah, maybe you could share with us like, what are 
some of the safety tips that you have, uh, especially for somebody somebody like you, which is smaller girl and is traveling solo around. You know, what are some of the tips? Okay, so for me, right, it, it's really important for you to do research before you go somewhere. Yeah, whether you are traveling in group or by yourself, yeah, do make do research first before that. Like maybe you can watch some vlogs or TikToks, the short reels. Like okay, safe places to visit for women. Yeah, for mm. example, in twenty twenty four. Yeah, something like that. You you can just like um read people reviews if you want to stay at a, a hotel or hostels. Make sure that you read the reviews there. Yeah, just uh. Don't don't only like compare the price. If you see the hotel price is like very cheap, and then okay, you um, uh, you you choose that hotel for the sake of the price. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Please read the review. Um, it, whether it's nearby the uh tourist attraction or not, whether it's safe enough, whether it's near to public transport or not. So these are some of the things that you need to be aware of, lah. Yeah, um. Yeah, yeah, just, I mean, like, the most important thing is, I would say, is confident. Yeah, <laughs> and think positive. If you think positive, all the positive aura will come to you, you know, and you will yeah. get over it, <laughs> no matter what. Although you face uh challenges or what, uh yeah, if you feel confident and stay positive, you can overcome the challenge. Like, yeah, as you, as you can see, like, I, I do face a lot of challenges, like, my bag got stolen or what. Just just make sure that you prepare and, and you have a plan B, like a backup plan, lah, I would say. Mm. In, just in case if anything happened, yeah, uh, you, you can, like, run away to some, somewhere safe. At least you know <laughs> where to go to. Yeah. Mm. So, for example, if you lost your passport, how how are you going to manage that by yourself? So you need to know like where is the nearest embassy, for example. So you know where how uh like also like how to report to the uh, police. So these are some of the things that you need to remember before you go for solo traveling or in a group also. Yeah. Ah uh, okay okay. Did you bring around like any like pepper spray or you know some people have like those type of sharp pen that. If anything happened, after that they will defend themselves. Did you do you carry around any of those type of things? Uh yes, I I do carry. I do carry. Yeah, some like something. Yeah, huh? there's some, something, something similar. Like. <laughs> some, something. Yeah. Uh, can, cannot cannot say on the screen lah. Is it? Cannot okay, say on the it? screen lah. <laughs> I say okay lah, but you you do carry some sort of protective measure lah in case. Yeah. Any yes. Things yes, happen. you can. It can be anything actually, not necessarily like pepper spray or what. Yeah. Uh, I, I've seen some people like I don't have a key with me but I know that some people actually use a key oh, grip, they, they they bring around like a false key then they put it oh. in between their knuckles and then they actually if anything yeah. happens they pull it out from their pocket and they do this I've seen some people actually do that before yeah so that one is quite interesting mm-hmm. oh, okay nice so do you come up with a like do you come up with a plan B that is custom to every single place you visit or do you just have a plan B in general because like if like you're traveling to places right you like you say you have to know where is your environment nearest police station everything which is mm. something that i also do like I, I will find out like oh this is my hotel where is the nearest hospital police station and things like i i would generally plan for all of the very important places and also like maybe which is the nearest Seven Eleven in case i'm super hungry you know but you know how do you how do you come up with your plan b you know what's your strategy Okay, I I don't think that I'm as detailed as you. <laughs> that you you find like all oh, those seven E and stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't really do that lah. Actually, uh, I just keep that in mind. <laughs> you know, like I just Google and then I know already. You know, I I don't really oh. have like a a list like a proper list like the address and everything. You know. Ah, uh, fair enough, <laughs> yeah. fair enough. Okay, I'm very detailed. Ah, uh, okay lah. So at least you know lah. Okay lah. Sometimes I have mm. the fear if my phone just gonna swipe away, right? Okay lah. I think the most important thing is that you have to be like you say confident, lah. Just be willing to go up to someone and ask, "Hey, where's the nearest police station? Where's the nearest Seven mm. Eleven? Must at least Correct. open out your mouth and go ask somebody, lah. Yeah. Yeah. Because because why? Because sometimes plan doesn't go as what you want. You know, sometimes the mm. the things can change 
like 360 degree from what you plan. So mm-hmm. what you need to do is you need to have uh, what we call a problem solving skill. Yeah, problem, problem solving, solving yeah. and also critical thinking skill is really really useful. <laughs> so you you just need to think like uh what just uh, your your plan need to make sense lah. Uh, <laughs> according to the sense. environment true. and the situation. Ah, true, 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 true. I mean, not wrong. It's the same thing. You get lost in Malaysia, so you gotta open up your mouth and ask somebody if you don't have your phone, your battery died. It's just, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing, also. Hmm. Ah, right. okay. Oh yeah, really and then yeah. uh, I have tips also, which what is are your tips um, very best? my yeah, it's not tips lah. It's important point lah, which is before you travel to countries, right? Please make sure you have a valid visa. Like for example, are there any like online form that you need to fill in before you go to that country or else you cannot enter the country, right? Yeah, oh, okay. that's a thing that you need to uh, aware of. So maybe you can go to our Malaysia Embassy website and see the country mm-hmm. listed. Like uh, what are the requirements of before you enter the country? Yeah, because sometimes like, like Singapore, right? Before you enter, you need to uh, fill up the what? The online white form, card, right? Yeah, yeah, card, yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. So same thing happened to the European. Maybe they uh charge some fees or anything. So you need to be aware of that. Yeah, please make sure to read before you go, or else you cannot enter. And then um, uh, what is another thing? yeah, visa is one thing. Oh yeah, another thing is uh stay connected. I mean the internet line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, please make sure that your SIM card covers all of the European region. You know, mm. please make sure that the country uh, that you want to go is listed down before you buy the SIM card. Yeah, it's really important to stay connected. Although there's Wi-Fi everywhere, but it's not everywhere. Mm. You know, there's like some rural areas, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there's no Wi-Fi, right? Yeah, so it's really important mm-hmm. to take note on that also. So, it's uh, it's okay to spend some money on SIM card or what, uh, just to make sure that mm-hmm. you are safe and stay connected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice, nice. What would, you, what would you say is things that is worth spending on? Because there are some people that like, they go for budget travel, but they really budget like crazy that they are willing to forego, uh, I would say the essentials, you know, to help make the trip safer rather than um, they are just budgeting everything. You know what are some of the what the some of the things that you feel is actually worth spending a little bit of money on? Okay, so uh, here's the thing. So it it depends on what kind of uh travel life that you want, the lifestyle that you want. Some people mm-hmm. go for budget, uh, traveling, and some people want to go for luxurious travel. So it depends. So I'm talking more about the budget, uh, budget travel <laughs> for for solo travelers lah. So if let's say you want to budget, uh, just make sure like you need to know like how many times you you want to eat in a day. That for example, I skip my breakfast, I eat lunch and dinner. So you need to roughly know how much is the cost on that. And the second thing is your hostel. Hostel, I think, is not that um, not that expensive compared to hotel. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And then the third thing is uh, which is quite expensive is public transportation so especially if you go to uh expensive cities like london for example yeah it can be very very expensive yeah although Mm. if you just take train and all so if you travel there for quite a long period right you can buy maybe um you know like the student card or that's like youth card also until age Ah, 25 yeah yeah it saves a lot lah yeah and then uh if you want to uh and then you also need to consider like yeah if let's say you go to italy rome rome italy right of course you mm. want to visit Colosseum, right so you mm. need to think of the uh, the the ticket price to enter that place so it's also expensive <laughs> you know the price to get in that place so mm. you need to remember the attraction tickets because yeah of course you you when you travel you want to visit this kind of uh, iconic places right 
So you need to allocate some budget on that um, um, attraction tickets as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. Ah, uh, yeah. I think I think the that that's the thing lah. Ah, okay, okay. Nah. Do you feel okay? So more so budget travel, and I, I think this applies to a lot of places as well. Like not just in UK, cause UK is is pretty much really expensive. But I think this one also applies to just any country that you go into general. Uh, you gotta know like, um, how much is the place of the hostel you're staying? You know, especially where where is it located? Is it in the middle of the city or is it far away? Because if you choose like a cheaper accommodation further away from city, you have to think about oh, you need to pay public transport. You have to take Grab all the way just to go into the city. So that's also like a trade off. But the first time I'm actually hearing more about sacrificing food. Yeah, I I would say that. It's not very common. This is actually the first time I'm hearing about it. I sacrifice my breakfast just for lunch and dinner. Yeah, maybe it's because of I eat a lot lah and I love food a lot lah. So that's why I was like, cannot sacrifice. I must eat my breakfast, lunch, dinner, supper, yeah, tea time, everything inside between uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess it's yeah, different. So yeah. Did you learn this along along the way as you traveled or like you learned it from like online blogs and posts on video and everything like that? Okay, actually, I read a lot on online lah, like um, mm. uh, from fellow travelers as well. Like, what are their tips when you go for or when you go to travel? So another mm. thing I would say, another tips is like, uh, maybe if you want to find um, cheaper price right for flights, you need to hunt for the deals. You know, like if let's say mm. like Klook having promotion. Uh, like campaign nine nine big sale for example. So that that's a moment where you can hunt for uh cheaper tickets, you know, like mm. Asia, uh, uh, doing like deals like like uh December deals or what. Then that's where you can hunt for cheaper, cheaper flight ticket option lah. I would say. And then another right. app uh which is the latest one is Shop Back if you if you have ever heard of it. Uh, yeah, Shop that back, one yeah. when yeah when you book something right on Shop Back you will get some cashback after that like return lah. Mm. So you can you can buy other stuff as well after that. Yeah, so it's really oh, it's a really good good platform also. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever used Sky Scanner before? Sorry. Sky Scanner. Sky Scanner. Oh, Sky Have you scanner. used Sky Scanner? Uh, yes, I use Sky Scanner also to compare price. And another one is ah. Omni. But I prefer Omeo, Skyscanner lah. O-M-I-O. Mm, yeah. O-M-I-O. Omeo lah. Mm, Omeo. Oh yeah, and then if you want to book bus, right, there's one app called Flix Bus. It's a green color F-I- bus. F-I-X-B-U-S. Flix Bus. B-U-S. Oh, Flix Bus. There's an app actually. Oh. Yeah, there's an app actually where you can like book bus to travel all around Europe. Because it covers all European countries. So if you want to go or from France to whatever whatever place to Germany to Switzerland, whatever, you can just book that uh uh bus from there. Ah, okay, nice. Yeah. nice. Okay. I actually have one question here which is uh coming from one of my friends that she actually asked um uh what is what is one country you would recommend for a first time solo traveler? In your opinion, yeah, maybe maybe uh, it is through your experience, or maybe you because you work in Klook, right? You have met all of these, um, all of these other travel content creators. You know, maybe you could share with us like what what do you feel it would be a good country in your opinion, and what would be like the other two or three countries that maybe you have learned uh from mixing around with all these content creators. Um. Okay. So it depends on which region. You mean like the Asian countries or Europe countries? Because uh, yeah, I, I travel uh, yeah. a lot in Europe, right? Mm-hmm. So I would say um UK, like London, mm-hmm. is a very good uh place for for beginners, I would say. And uh, for uh, Scotland also. Yeah, Scotland is also very nice. <laughs> Just like what I mentioned earlier, it's like Edinburgh, right? The city is very, very beautiful. It's it's very safe place also. The public transportation is good. And the food there also very accessible. Yeah. Mm. So I would recommend, uh, if, if Europe lah, Europe and UK, UK place, uh, UK um, region. Yeah. So maybe you can explore somewhere in 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 the UK 
Oh, there's another one underrated country in Europe. So if you think about Europe, people always say, oh, I want to go to Switzerland. I want to go to France, mm. right? But the costing there is quite high, <laughs> right? Hmm. So there's another one, this underrated country, which not uh, many people go there. It's called Malta. Okay, yeah, okay. M-A-L-T-A, Malta. It's a very underrated place and it's really safe for solo traveler. Hmm. You know, the crime rate is there. It's very, very low. Like, okay. very, very low. <laughs> Even you can walk around at night, like nothing happened. Yeah. Ah, so, nice. I, I generally feel very safe there rather than hmm. London. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, correct. Okay, okay. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Like Malta, is, is a Malta like an island or something like that? Yes, it's, it's a I... small island. It's a small ah. country actually. Yeah, it's located right below uh, Italy. It's ah, in between okay, Italy okay. and Spain. There's one small, very, very small uh, country there. But it's very nice. Oh. The people is amazing. They are wonderful. Mm. And then the food is good. Um, yeah, the places, the the if you if you like um coast sea, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh yeah, there's a lot of activities that you can do there, like snorkeling, everything. Yeah. Ah, oh, nice. Fun fact, I actually have because my cousin, she studied in um I forgot where she studied, but she studied in one of the European countries and she started study um to be to be a doctor you know so she's right now based in malta so that's why you say malta i was like oh okay my cousin yeah so my cousin practices in malta as a doctor oh ah, okay, that's okay. good to know yeah it's a really nice place you know the yeah. environment is very chill you know the people there is very friendly yeah is, is, compared is it like, to other is it like countries that i think mm. Oh, okay. is it like laid back, like island life? Like you go Langkawi, then you feel like everybody is like very relaxed, like island life, like pull up and down, all this sort of thing. Do you feel that? Yes, but I mean like Langkawi is just part of the state, right? Yeah. <laughs> but this one is the whole country. You know, mm. the, the vibe is different. You will feel it um different. La. Yeah, so I, I really recommend for people to go there. Yeah, uh-huh. actually it's very underrated. <laughs> Underrated la. Mm, okay, you guys have heard it here. Yeah, All right. Correct. Nice. Okay. So that's Europe. You know, how about like Asia? I think you have done a little bit of traveling here and there around Asia. Or, yeah, you know, what would you say? Correct. Correct. Uh, if in Asia, I've been to Korea before. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where I spend my uh, time the most lah in Korea okay. compared to other Asian countries. Because I've been to Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, uh, what Saudi Arabia? Yeah, mm. I've been there too. Yeah, but if you want to travel to Middle East, you need to be you. I I would recommend you to join in a group tour lah, rather than going alone. Yeah, it is mm. not that safe for solo traveling. Yeah, and also mm. like uh some African countries like uh Morocco or what? Uh yeah, based on what I read in reviews and all, it's not that safe for women especially to go for solo traveling in that uh uh in that part of countries yes so you just, just need you need to like um uh, uh do a lot of research about it lah like what kind which country is safe to go for solo traveling so for for uh, Asian countries. I've been to Korea only la. I I mean I mean uh the 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 longest time that I spend is in Korea. Yes. Uh, mm. Because I never okay, been to okay. Japan. <laughs> so I couldn't Japan, like Japan. Uh, 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 spend uh much on that. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I think <laughs> if we're talking about like. Probably where is like one of the safest one for like solo travel. It's probably Singapore lah. But then like Malaysia, Singapore just next to it also like doesn't make sense lah. So maybe if this you podcast know, actually reaches to okay. people, yeah. Ah uh, yeah, you know what? Actually, if you want to make your life more adventurous, right? Uh, and if you want to explore like other Southeast Asian countries as well, so maybe you can take routes starting from Singapore. 
and go all the way to Malaysia, Thailand, then you can enter Vietnam after that, and then all the way to uh -huh. China. <laughs> That's another adventure. Oh. Route this for way you. Up, right? yeah, you can, yes, correct. Because from Singapore, you can take bus all the way to Malaysia. Then you can hmm. take train to Thailand. And then from Thailand, you can take train to Vietnam. But it takes a long journey. Lah. But you know what? Wow. When you travel, you want to feel the experience. You know, you don't want to mm. rush, you know, but you want to feel uh, the experience, the people that you meet while you're traveling, uh, yeah, the the challenges, you know. That's how that's mm. how you actually value your trip, you know. If you just mm. go there and just think like, want to have fun at the end of the day you don't really like you know you you can't you can't even share stories that much because the most important mm. thing is the experience that you gain from your traveling mm. yeah <laughs> true that true that uh, i think i can relate to that a lot like, what you explained about traveling is is what i think about traveling as well so like there are, I, I, I think it also depends on what type of travel. So like the traveling that we're talking about is like really experienced traveling. Like we, we sometimes like we go out, you know, there's a plan or some days there isn't a plan, but you go out and actually like see what is it like out there. You just walk around the street. This, this is what I like to do. Yeah, I like to just go out without a plan, walk along the streets. You, you see the people, you see the environment, you just see the shops, you see how the locals interact and you get immersed in the culture. I think the important part is being immersed in the culture where else it's kind of different if like you're planning more like a leisure trip you know uh i plan to go to hot yai okay that i plan to go to tourist spot a b c maybe a few places that the food is nice a and b and then after that that makes up the whole trip but i feel like those type of trips are more just like they they are they are chips they are just trips to go and relax i think those is what is more kind of geared towards you know planning it out you know you want to have Peace of mind. I think that's very important. Peace of mind. You go over there and then just like, oh, okay, you know, we are here. We chillax a bit and everything. But when I think about really going out to travel, traveling, yeah, that's what I think about as well. I want to be immersed in this whole entire experience of like, what's it like to be uh, going out with a plan and finding like the hidden gem, you know, like only the locals know when you actually go out and then spot it. Um, and then like, of course, you know, what's life without a little bit of challenge and having the little bit of the lows as well, like, you know, you get lost, your power bank finished, and your battery almost gone. Uh, you have to go and, you have to open your mouth and speak to the local people, which I, I, I feel like it's really part of the experience of um, appreciating, um, appreciating the culture and the places outside of our home country. Because in Malaysia, you know people over here, we we know your neighbor, you go to any state also, you you speak the same language, you can open up your mouth and ask. English, Chinese, Malay, whatever it is. Like people people are generally like, oh they know you're Malaysian, I'm Malaysian, like I, I told on you like help you out. Like it's it's pretty much fine. But when you go out to the other country as well, you are like the you are like the grace of people. Like. People are just willing to help just because out of the out of the kindness of their hearts as well. Yeah, so I can relate to to what you say about traveling uh, and being part of this whole immersive experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm seeing. Do you do you feel like um, how do say? Do you feel like a different person after you have gone for all this traveling, and then you come back to Malaysia, and then you suddenly just feel like you level up one level above? Do you have that sort of feeling? You know? Yeah. Yes, you know, like before I go, uh. I go travel, right? Um, you know, sometimes I, I, when you have too much to do, uh, you know, like you already stagnant in your life, with your life, right? It, it will mm. become boring and then sometimes you feel a bit burnout, you know? But mm. when you explore something that is so much to see out there, when you come back, right, you will become a brand new person, I would say, mm. the the motivation for you to work hard and save money to travel, yeah, that's what keeps motivates you, I would say. Yeah, so, I, I would say that, I, I, um, I mean, um, how to, how to explain this? I mean, like, after coming back from traveling, I can feel the changes, lah, in terms of, like, uh, acceptance, like, 
uh, getting to know other cultures and their lifestyle mm. and all, we feel more open minded. Yeah, mm. because uh, if we stay in our country, right, we only know what's happening in our own country. But after we mm. go through a lot of uh, challenges outside there, we know how to deal with the problems and all. So whatever that happens in uh, go, what, that we're going through in our life now is something like, mm. oh, I can overcome this. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, because I overcome those those challenges previously. So of course I can overcome this problem too. So. Yeah, mm. <laughs> that that's what makes uh, keeps me going, lah. Yeah. Mm, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Do you feel like after you return from all these other countries, you also maybe I don't know. Do you have like a deeper appreciation for Malaysia, like your home country? Like you go to UK, Europe, and then the food there is not nice. Then you come back to Malaysia, the food is good. Because I had this experience. Like I went to Singapore. I must say, not all the food is good. I, I didn't really enjoy it. Then after that, when I come back to Malaysia, I eat KFC also. KFC tastes like super nice, you know. Yeah, do you have like this type of feeling? Like after you travel, you come back, you just... You, you are more open-minded, but you have like a deeper appreciation for the place that you live. Correct. So if you see Malaysia, right, it's a very unique country, you know, compared to other countries that you visit that I have visited mm. so if you see like Malaysia is a very multicultural multiracial country so mm. you can't see anywhere like other countries where mosque temple and church side by side <laughs> you know where we live around to get uh, like happily together it's really hard to see that that those kind of things in uh, other countries Mm. So another thing I would say like food, for example, I have a deep appreciation in food, yeah. Because in in uh in uh what in the UK back then I miss eating uh nasi lemak, yeah, those Japanese ramen and everything. I I really, uh yeah, yeah like sukiya, all those kind of stuff, right? I I really miss all of them, um, all of that. Because I can't get it. So when I come back to Malaysia, I feel like, oh, yeah, we have varieties of food, which is authentic. <laughs> mm, <laughs> you know? Fair. Yeah, which is authentic. And also, we, you know, like, if you go to other European countries, right, the choice of menu is limited, especially the mm. drinks. If you see the drinks, the choice of drinks, uh, they only have tea, coffee, yep. or like, uh, what? Plain water only. But if you see in Malaysia, right, we have kopi o, kopi peng, kopi whatever, milo dinosaur, milo, whatever, teh tarik, teh o, whatever, right? Uh, teh and kopi together, <laughs> teh and milo, right. milo and kopi, right? <laughs> One kopi, there's a lot of varieties. There's like a varieties of co- uh, kopi there. Yeah, mm. so that that's what I appreciate, what I have that we have in Malaysia now. Lah. Yeah, mm. the lifestyle is different. You can see there are more... I wouldn't say... How how would I say that? Um, hmm. I mean... Yeah, yeah. in Malaysia, you can... You can... How ah? You... All, all the, the food and everything is... Variety... More variety compared to... What they have. Yeah, in mm. Europe. Mm. True, true, true. Yeah, I think right. I think what you mentioned also really hits home is that um we live in a very multicultural society. And I, I I always feel that people that don't really go out and travel, they or people that don't take some time outside of Malaysia, they they don't really feel it. Because we're so used to it, right? Yeah, but mm. I have been out of the country so like a few times here and there, right? I, one of my favorite questions to ask because I I I grew up in um a, a environment where my best friend is Indian, my very good friend is Malay, and then I I'm a Chinese person lah. But then my group of Chinese people is kind of small because I can't really speak Chinese, so I cannot connect with them. So I I I have a very diverse group of friends, and I like to click out very one. And sometimes I ask certain groups of people like um, hey, you got a Malay friend or not? Hey, you got a Chinese friend now. Some people actually they don't have, you know, it was very surprising. When I went to Singapore, right, I asked a few of my colleagues, um, Chinese colleagues, hey, do you have a Indian friend? Do you know at least two or three Indian friends? They don't have. Do you know any um Malay friends, you know, people that you can call your friends? Don't have. I'm like, 
Mm. And sometimes also, I like to ask this question to Malaysians, you know, like, like, do you have a Chinese friend, Indian friend, Malay friend, somebody who you really can call a friend? Yeah, then sometimes, like, they, they can, they, they just don't have it, you know. Probably it's because maybe they haven't um, experienced or, like, they have opened up your, themselves to other people, you know, other races, that we, which we somewhat have this problem sometimes in Malaysia as well. But I think when we, when we actually connect with other people, you know, connect with different races, you know, that we have so much of it in Malaysia that for me, uh, when I connected, I have all these type of friends. When I actually went to somewhere else, I was working in Singapore for one year, I felt very lost and I felt like, I, I, I felt a hole inside my heart. Like, like, it didn't feel right. Yeah. Because, like, you didn't have all, one is friends, but you didn't have a diverse group of community to be inspired by something. Yeah, so I think what you mentioned, like, in Malaysia, we're very multicultural. This is one of, like, the very overlooked type of things. Maybe people will say, what's good about Malaysia is always food, food, food. But I think one of the things that really makes Malaysia, Malaysia, is definitely the people. And also, more importantly, the the community that we have, like, diverse group of people that just comes together from different races and cultures. Yeah, I think that's what you say also. And food, la, okay, la, we... we we are foodie people. Uh. Food here is just, just good. Uh. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, yeah. mm. All right. Um, another two more questions, then we can wrap this up. Yeah. Okay. So, fun question is, where do you plan to go next? Okay, the next place. Interesting question. I also don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably somewhere nearby first. Mm-hmm. Around Asia. I don't know which country yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I really want to visit Japan, China, yeah, the East Asia countries. Okay, okay. Have you considered mm-hmm. like Central Asia? Like I have a friend from Kazakhstan and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, I heard that Kazakhstan is a wonderful country. I mean, the view there is very, mm. very nice because I saw like one of my friends been to uh, Kazakhstan before and the view is almost like Switzerland, you know. Mm, yeah, 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 that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so um, you have a friend there? Eh? It's really nice. I, have a, I had a friend that we actually met through an event. So I it's interesting like because I did an event uh where I was the MC for this um like model United Nations. It's very cool. So she came from Kazakhstan and I have a friend also from Nepal, you know, and it's really interesting. Like I think yeah, Lord, you open your mind, you meet a lot of people, then they just like, oh, if you're free, you come over, right? Yeah, but I've been seeing a lot of people actually going to Kazakhstan, especially like people that like outdoors. So this it's one of those places where um if you if you want an alternative to like New Zealand or maybe Switzerland, you know, from the mountains, you know, Kazakhstan, you know, Central Asia. Central Asia actually. Anything with like the Azad, Astan, Stan, Stan. It seems to be pretty much good hidden gems, I realize. Yes, correct. It's really like underrated countries that you need to explore as well and there's actually another region that i really want to explore is the balkan areas you mm. know the balkan countries yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, mm, the balkan and also eastern europe they are like greece bosnia yeah like bulgaria and all it's really interesting to go as well ah okay okay oh yeah probably i have one more question to ask which is like how because it's not we're talking about all the countries you visited, you know, what's what's your main way of like how do you actually um generate a source of income, you know, what are your income strategies to go for all these type of trips? Can ask this thing can ask about. Okay, so uh, if you're really passionate about traveling and you also want uh, at the same time if you also want to earn some side income, I would say that joining Club Creator Program is one of the ways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but of course you need you need to have like um um your tabung or saving or so lah. Mm-hmm. Like if let's say if you want to plan like going to um like for example if you want to go to Japan uh at the end of this year, like you need to plan out how much you need to save per month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe for example you can keep like two hundred per month just for your traveling uh um traveling tabung. Mm. Yeah, so but you need to keep firm with it lah. 
<laughs> like you, 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 you cannot cheat lah. If let's say you really want something, right? You really need to keep firm, and then yeah, no matter what, you 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 have to save that two hundred ringgit per month. Yeah, so at uh, so at the end of the day, you can you can travel to Japan. Yeah, for example. Yeah, another thing is the, the one that I mentioned just now, the Club Creator Program, right? Mm. So when you create a lot of uh travel content, you can mm. earn five percent commission also from each booking, which I think is really uh really good also for you to earn mm. some side income. And yeah. yeah, it's another way for you for you to gain some money to travel also. Yeah. True that. True that. Yeah. I think. I think a lot of people. I think a lot of people think about the traditional method, which is go and work. You know, work part time, keep your pocket money. But then there's another part of like making money, which is like affiliate programs and stuff like that. Where if if people don't talk about it, people do not know about it. And I think what you mentioned, you know, not not only because you're part of Clue, but I've seen like how Clue actually structured their affiliate program. It's a pretty decent way also, I realise. Yeah, like Amanda, my girlfriend, right? She has been like using this club program. Then after that, she's been... I think, I think she already crossed like around like 500 USD. I think about that time. Like, yeah, it, it, it's really insane of how much you can actually earn from this club program thing. Uh. Yeah. Mm, correct. Interesting, interesting. There, there's something that you can you can explore also, like, like affiliates program. Or, um, yeah, if you are a huge influencer, you can also like <laughs> travel for free or so. Yeah, that's mm. another way actually that you can do. Mm. Oh, we got cut off a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got cut off a little bit there. Yeah. Okay. But but the last thing you said was, uh, if you're a big influencer, then you can travel for free. Lah. That's true also. Correct. <laughs> if I really like passionate about uh content, uh, uh travel content and yeah, you can actually like uh, there's a lot of like hotels that really wants you to uh, wants you needs you to actually mm. like promote their place and all. Yeah. Mm, okay, so, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's another way also. Yeah, so I'll be waiting for your travel content lah. I'll be waiting for you to review a hotel in Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully one day. Hopefully, okay, okay, okay. All right. So, last question. You know, what other what is your what is your top advices you will give for people who want to go traveling solo? Okay, advice ah uh, that uh, yeah. As I mentioned like many times earlier, uh, previously, right? You you need to have like a, a positive. Uh, you need to stay positive no matter what uh happen, and also you need to. Um. Um. Stay. Uh. You need to be confident. Yeah. Do a lot of uh a lot of research on the place that you want uh to go, and then make sure it's mm-hmm. it's safe for you. And then uh remember to always like keep update um uh, your whereabout to your families or your close friends. Yeah. Just make sure that they know where you are. Yeah. Just in case if anything happen. And yeah, I would say like uh travel insurance. Yeah, the first aid kits, the medical stuff is also important. And then make sure to keep your belongings uh, safely. Yeah, and yeah, just, just just plan out your itinerary well. Yeah, so that you can immerse yourself fully in that experience. You know, don't 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 rush up when you want to travel. Don't rush. Yeah, don't like uh uh, uh in one day you need to finish. 10 places. Don't do that. Mm. You know, it's really tiring. And then you will end up sick and then you, you can't enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. So what you need to do is just chill. Uh, just, okay, maybe like one day you can explore two or three places. That's enough. Mm. Yeah, I would say if you want to uh, really immerse yourself. Yeah, don't, 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 too, don't make it too rush lah. And when you plan out your itinerary. <laughs> you know, give some time gap, you know. Like especially, mm. I see a lot of people they miss their flight or whatever, right? Yeah, because they fail to plan out their itinerary, uh, wisely. Mm. You know, if you uh maybe like one day you can just pick like two activities in a day. So if let's say your flight is at four p.m., so you need to be at the airport two hours before your flight. <laughs> That's really important. So that maybe your flight will be rescheduled or whatever, make it earlier or what. So at least you have time there. Um, 
And then, yeah, make sure that from one activity to one activity, keep the gap lah. At least like five hours mm. so that you can enjoy what you are doing at that true, point. True, true. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So once again, uh, thank you so much, Atika. You come on the show. You know, you share your tips and tricks. I hope everybody here actually had a actionable takeaway. Uh, and if you're interested to learn more about solo traveling, you can contact Atika. You know, so what's the best way to reach your Atika? Then later I'll throw it in into the um YouTube caption at the bottom and stuff like that. What's the best okay. way to reach you? Okay, <laughs> the best way to reach out to me is via Instagram. Yeah, you you guys can just contact, uh, just DM, drop a DM to me, and I will reply. Yeah, I think I will always reply DM lah, then WhatsApp. <laughs> so just just drop a DM to me at, uh, should I put my name, like my uh, IG account? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's your Instagram? Let's have it on record. Okay, you know? so at Atika dot Ashura. Let me just find my Instagram account. Um, yeah. This one. Uh, you can spell uh, it out like A T. Yeah, so A T I Q A H A S Y U R A. Yes. Alright. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can. But no worries. I also put it inside the um the the captions below when I'm actually typing it out. You know. So once again, thank you so much, Atika, for joining us on the show. And everybody, I will see you at the next one.